All right, welcome back. It's Breakfast Daily here on City TV, and uh, the show is interactive. Kindly use the hashtag Breakfast Daily for us to hear what you're thinking. The WhatsApp line is 0550585832. Uh, my name is David Kwekusechi, and I'm here with Apioko, and we are doing this together all the way till 10 a.m. Now, um, we want to hear from you. And we understand that there are some challenges go people experiencing, certain challenges, um, recharging their uh, meters, their electricity meters. I want to hear from you as you're watching us. That if you've had this experience or you know somebody who's had this experience, share with us what the issue actually has been or it seems to be. We want to find out and throw some light on this and hopefully put a bit of pressure on those who need to deal and fix the problem. Because um, in, in, in the hub of you know, this area where we live, certain houses are in darkness, but it's not because you know, they, they have been disconnected. It's not because they can't afford to buy power. They, it, it's just not working. The meters are not working. They can't recharge the meters. Um, and so please let us know the WhatsApp line again is 0550 Do send us a message. Let us know if you know someone experiencing this, you yourself are experiencing this. Um, let us know what's that, that, what, what, how that is going with you. Yeah, so again, 0550-585-832, 0550-585-832. If you are having challenges with your ECG meters, you've tried to recharge your cards, or you're receiving messages, I know some people have received text messages mm. telling them that, you know, there's a network issue or there are issues with the system. Mm. We want to hear from you so that we can just get a sense of how widespread, far spread this thing is. But yeah, I mean, it must be very frustrating yeah. knowing that you have the money to purchase <coughs> electricity. And yet you have... You have your card, yeah. you have your meter, you're connected to the grid legally, and yet you can't buy your mm, electricity. Mm, and, you mm. know, now a lot, our lives are so dependent on power. On power yeah. You know, in so many ways, shape, shapes or forms, even communications. I don't mm. remember the last time I entered someone's private residence and yeah. saw a landline. Yeah. You know, everybody has a mobile phone, yeah. so you don't have power, you can't charge your phone, yeah. you're cut off. And it's not just in terms of phone calls, it's text messages, it's WhatsApp messages, yeah. it's social yeah. media yeah. And, and pay attention mm. to what's going on. Um, if you don't have power and you are unfortunate and you can't have access to a TV somewhere, you can't watch us or you can't watch on Facebook mm. if your phone, your is, phone off. is off. So, it's almost like being disconnected from the mm. world, you know. Um, we will definitely to be speaking to officials so that we can find out if they have heard mm. about the problem mm. and mm. if they can give us any insight into yeah. what's going on. But beyond this, you know, particular challenge we're talking mm. about, I have also seen reports, I've, I've, I saw my parents experience it just a few days ago. Okay. You know, there are a newer crop of cards, mm. recharge, ECG recharge cards that okay. have been given, okay. right? Okay. And of course, we know what the cards look like. They've got a chip, mm. you know. Yes. Uh, there's a digital system mm -hmm. going on mm -hmm. that we've been using for some time. Yeah. So you go and you purchase <coughs> your power onto the card, yes. you receive your receipt, you go back, you slot it into or show the card yeah, to, to the your meter, room. depending on the type you have. But there, there are older cards. Mm -hmm. So those who are put onto the uh, the prepaid system very early on, those yes. cards are gradually being phased out. Mm -hmm. And people are to go and apply for new cards. Okay. And I know a number of people who have gone and still haven't received their new, their cards, new cards after months see. because they are not ready. Mm. They, you know, they're they dealing with serial numbers and whatnot. So I, I get it that it may take a bit of time to, to make that happen, but then they're not, they've not got their cards. So yeah. now, when you go to certain recharge points or points of purchase yeah. for electricity, yeah. it's two different systems. So I don't know how it works, but at certain points in time, you are not able to buy mm. with your older card. Okay. And they may say, okay, you can only buy with a new card now. You can't buy with the old card but at this point. It's not like they've, they've stopped recharging yeah. those cards. It's just yeah. at certain points in time, I don't know whether it's a systemic problem or whatever it is, but... We can't do this, or, but we can't yeah. do the new ones. I, I would imagine some sort of um, some sort of overlap. Yeah. You know, of two systems is probably what is creating this situation yeah. because so there's some kind it of makes no resistance. Yes, yeah, there's some kind of conflict. Yeah, yeah. It, it, I because it doesn't make any sense to phase out 
a system when you're not completely ready to roll out the new system, mm. do you see? So if you say we're well, withdrawing old cards, you have to have all the new cards properly, you know, um, um, uh, sorted out, you know, ready to go before, uh, you know, they, 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 they are rolled out, you know. So I think it's a, a bit challenging. Um, to find out this, but um, it would be good to speak uh, with ECG, um, so someone from ECG, to find out what the real issue is. Yes, so we do have at the moment Charles Ni Ayuku Ayuku on the line. He's the general manager for external communications at the Electricity Company of Ghana. Good morning. Good morning, and how are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you very much. Wonderful. So, Charles, we just want to find out even most recently this morning. Even within our little hub of Adabraka, we have people who are in darkness. And the reason is that they are unable to recharge their cards for their prepaid meters. So it's not that they don't have money. It's not that they've been cut off. It just seems to be a network or a systems challenge. Um, are you aware of this and what's causing it if you are? Yes. Um, thank you very much once again for this opportunity. And... Yes, we are aware. So on Tuesday, we issued a, a statement or an announcement uh, in regard that we have been some challenges with our prepaid systems and some of our operational areas. So some of our customers in some of our operational areas were having some challenges um, when it comes to purchasing of electricity credits um, for their prepaid uh, meetings. Okay. So, yes, so yesterday we issued another statement to that effect. And uh, as I, I speak to you, uh, we are making every effort to restore the system to normal. Okay, but what is the challenge? I mean, I'm sure it's very technical, but in the layman or laywoman's parlance, is there anything you can, you can do to try to explain to us what the, the issue is? Okay, so the issue is an ICT, I mean, an uh, information communication technology. So okay. it has to do with um, um, our system. Okay. Yes. Um, fortunately, even yesterday and parts of Tuesday, we were able to restore some of the systems of the service. So uh, some customers were able to purchase some credit. Unfortunately, the system went down again. Mm. So mm. it has been quite on and off, but um, we, we hope in that by... Um, the close of today, we'll be able to restore the system to normalcy. In fact, um, we, we, are, we are not equally happy about the, the situation, and we really want to apologize to our customers uh, for the inconvenience caused by this particular challenge. And um, I, as um, I spoke to your producers, I, as soon as there's any update out, get in touch with them, and then be sure that everything is well sorted in terms of communicating with our customers. Okay, so Charles, basically what you're telling us is it's machines and technology being machines and technology. There are challenges and you're trying to work through them. There's not necessarily a, a specific problem that we can pinpoint. Is that right? Um, yes, it has to do with uh, our, our system, okay. our mission system. Yes. Okay, all right. But Charles, I also want to find out, uh, are there specific areas across the country that have been affected by this system challenge? Or is it a yes, widespread so, thing? Or is so it nationwide? As, as, as I speak to you, um, the information that we speak from our various operational areas, uh, the, some of our customers, not all, our, all of our customers, all of our customers in the areas um, such as the Volta, part of the Volta region, okay. so not the entire Volta region, part of Kumasi, uh, part of Accra, part of Takradi, Tema, Cape Coast, Katsua, Winneba, Suetru, Kofedua, and Koko, and Tafo. So, so in, in some parts of these areas, they will speak to information that they have in this challenge. Okay, so as far as you are aware, we're looking more at the middle belt, moving down towards the south, you know, yes, some, southeast, some southwest. Areas. Okay, in yes, some, some areas. Some areas, yes. Okay, no reports from the northern parts, so Savannah, northeast, upper, um, none of that. Unfortunately, um, that's not good to that, that, that extent. You know, that, that part is being covered by NETCO. Okay. Yes. So, so even if there were... The, okay, so you wouldn't be involved in that? No, right. yeah, you would not be involved in that. Okay. 
Charles, before you go, I also want to find out, there's another issue that's been brought to our attention recently. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but ECG has been issuing newer cards for prepaid meters as opposed to what's been being used over some time now. Is that right? Well, um, if there's a new installation of a meter, you receive a new um, uh, card. I mean, that has your meter number or any details that uh, you're able to use to, to make its credit. Okay. But, yes. you, but you don't have any systemic um, uh, changeover from old cards to new cards? No, please. No, please. We oh. don't have such. Yes. Okay. The, I, I'm, I'm sure you remember during the implementation of the tariff, Mm. We, we we had the time and date issue. Yes, yes. That, that, yes. Has, that has been it. Okay. But, yeah, this this has had to do with uh, prepaid metering systems. Okay. 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 Yeah. All right. So Charles, thank you for speaking to us, and we'll be looking forward to hearing the updates when they come exactly. through. Exactly. I'll, I'll, I'll keep you updated. Okay. And thank, thank you. Thank you very much for the opportunity, and you still have to guys. Welcome. You're very welcome, and thank you. Thank you for speaking to us. All right. All right. So that was uh, Charles Ni Aiku Aiku, General Manager for External Communications with the ECG. All right. Well, um, another conversation that we want to get into right away is about salt mining in the Kitu South um, area of the Volta region. Um, some issues there, the allegations of illegalities um, going on in the area. Our colleague Desmond Ago has brought us a report. Let's take a look at this report and we'll get into conversations. Residents in Lakalevi Kope in the Ketu South Municipality of the Volta region were on Saturday, 17 September 2022, thrown into a state of shock and mourning after a family of five who went fishing along the lagoon drowned. Following the death of the mother and her three children, some signposts have been erected by the Seven Seas Mining Company to warn residents of the dangers ahead. But the residents say the signposts erected are misinforming residents as they have been mounted on a hill above the dike. According to them, the activities of the Seven Seas Mining Limited are affecting their livelihoods. Some of the residents spoke to City News on the issue and want urgent measures to be taken to assuage their problems. Uh, we have realized that enough is enough and the good people of these electoral areas need to stand up and speak so that governments will set up a committee of inquiry to look into the activities of the company. We have decided that on 27th of this month we are hitting the road to articulate our views on the operation of the company so that um, um, uh, those who are in the helm of affairs will come to the aid of the individuals that are losing their lives on a daily basis at the company site. There's no work that the community can do thereby surviving out of the work. So all, we all depend on this. So as the company has constructed this dike, you can see that that's why the fact that the incident occurred. Or you can see people in the lagoon still fishing. It's part of our keeping. So say that, that people continue to go into the lagoon for fishing. Instead of them erecting the the signpost into the the lagoon, they have erected it on top of the hill. So it doesn't show any what awareness that whoever is going to fish, that as you are going closer, there is a, a hole there. Assembly member for the Laklevi Copper Electoral Area, Victor Ayaku noted that the community was not engaged by the salt mining company prior to the creation of the dike. According to him, efforts to bring such activities to its minimum have proven futile and hence their decision to protest. He noted that the affected communities have engaged the necessary stakeholders and will embark on a demonstration to voice out their grievances. Not involving us no, cannot possibly warrant them to have a document to operate. That is why we keep saying we believe strongly that they do not have the requirements to do what they are doing uh, from the earlier. We ask, we even ask for those things. We have latest written documents that support this and they couldn't provide them. Especially the new expansion that they are doing. We don't believe that they are giving the concession to do that. We don't believe they are giving the concession to do that. So governments will come in and do the proper investigation and let us all know. And also governments will make sure that the regulatory bodies do their job 
that the communities uh, actually they are taking the livelihood from the community so there should be an alternative for the community so residents here at La Clefie Coffe and its surrounding communities in the Ketu South Municipality of the Volta region still say they are not happy with the actions of the Seven Seas Mining Limited a signpost meant to be erected somewhere here has rather been erected on top of the hill behind me. Um, according to the residents, this is posing as a threat to them as there is a deep hole in the lagoon, but fisher folks here depend on this river for their survival. All right, so that uh, report there by our colleague Desmond Ago and um, our other colleague Benjamin Aklama also has another report uh, from a different area. Let's take a look at that one too. So what you see to my right hand side is a mammoth crowd drawn from the Ketu South Municipality protesting the operations of uh, a salt mining company in uh, Adina, uh, Seven Seas. Their concern is mainly over the area you see to my left, which is uh, an area they say does not fall within the lot allowed by law for, to Seven Sea to operate uh, their salt mining activities in. This is also where some people have lost their lives because of the dikes you see where salt mining activities have been going on. I have with me the assemblyman for the area uh, to help us understand what exactly their concerns are. Uh, we have come out in our numbers uh, to demonstrate against uh, something which we have never seen before. Uh, for some time now, we've just noticed uh, some people uh, who came to our lagoon, where we get our uh, livelihood from. Uh, we noticed that uh, they are white men. And uh, we asked them questions, and what they told us is that uh, uh, they were given the place by the government uh, to come and uh, do a sort here, or they come and do their business here. There's no documentation, there's nothing to show that uh, they were given the authority to come and do. And so we make several attempts to stop them not to come and do the, the, uh, whatever they want to do. Okay, tell me what happened here. Is this where they both lost their lives? Yes, it came to some time now, about uh, two months, three months ago. Uh, we lost somebody. We just do communal labor at one of the communities here. So they just go, they, they, they enter the, 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 the water to go and bath. After bathing, one of them lost uh, their life in the water. And so uh, it came to... I noticed so that in the following day, I think uh, two months later, two months later, another person lost his life at Nugoku. And what is happening now is that uh, uh, one of our uh, Unicom team members is a former Unicom team member who went to the lagoon with his wife and children, and all of them, four of them lost their life. So the, the wetland is basically shallow water. I mean, it's not, it's not as deep. And so uh, the claim is that the reason why those who lost their lives, lost their lives at the other side, which is just across where I'm standing now, is because dikes, which are deep holes, were created in these wetland areas without any notice of save. And so those who usually would just go to the lagoon to either fish or even swim or bath uh, are likely to lose their lives if they don't know that the areas have been dug deep and there are dikes in, in, in those areas. We have come to realize that uh, they have uh, secured a permit from Minerals Commission to mine salt uh, at Adina and its enclave. But unfortunately, just last year, we realized that they started expanding their work to cover a uh, part of Adafi, uh, Nogokpo, and the Lice, which were not initially part of their, their concession. And so uh, 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 the assembly members of that electoral area approached them uh, and uh, some stakeholders to stop their activities, but they couldn't hear to their, 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 their calls of the assembly members. Um, what we realized later on it was that they have created deep holes to, to form a dike, and those holes were left uncovered. So when it rained, the whole place got flooded. As usual, the fishermen there went to fish. So this year alone, the holes that they've created that is holding enough water had uh, uh, drowned about three people already. And the recent one was uh, a mother and three children. You can imagine that. So that we are all peeved, and then we realize that there is the need for us to go onto the street to shout for the whole world to know the illegality being perpetrated by this company. But Sly, if you are saying that the company does not have the documentation 
that covers these areas. Why are you not using the legal approach? Why are you not going through a court to stop them? We have tried to solicit support from uh, our MCE, who is our immediate boss, so that we, if they have a document, they should show it to us. We have tried all other means, but it is not yielding any results. Well, we see that getting onto the road for now, yes, is the best way to go. And secondly, we'll take a legal action against the company. What happens if they don't hear the call you're making now? And, uh, you say you go, you go to court? Of course. You, you, you of course, we are resorting to court. Look, Ghana is a country of laws. It's governed by laws. So we're going to tell the law this time around. This, uh, this company has uh, an interesting history in, in, in this area. Uh, from around 2016, the name changed to uh, Seven Seas. Before then, it was a Kensington Salt Company, and there were a lot of banter between the company and the natives. The natives who were, especially in the Dinablakusu areas, who were mainly salt dealers, were complaining that the operations of the Kensington Company at the time was denying them their uh, livelihood, which was salt mining. The company has uh, transmogrified into uh, seven seas and the complaints are now that they are encroaching on areas that they do not seem to have legal authority to operate in and they are thus causing the, the, the people to lose their lives. All right, so there you have um, those two reports, one by our colleague Desmond Ago and another one by uh, Benjamin Aklama, both in the Volta region. Now, uh, Desmond Ago has joined us on the line uh, this morning. Desmond, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Yes, um, how are you doing this morning? I, I'm, I'm doing well, sir. How about you? Very well, thank you, thank you. And welcome to Breakfast Daily. Now, um, so this situation as it stands, uh, what the, the general understanding of the people is what exactly? They are upset because holes have been dug in the ground that um, are now con uh, so soaking up water. And people don't know that these holes are there and therefore are falling into the holes by mistake. Is that what is happening? Yes, that, that's uh, exactly what's happening at the south part of the Kensington South municipality. Um, according to the residents in these areas, um, the, some activities of the Seven Seas Salt Mining Limited is endangering their lives or is putting them at a risk. As um, where the company is now working mm. is exactly where they also go for prison. Okay. Um, according to the residents, um, the, the, the service is extended their activities just closer to their community without okay. any community engagement to let them know uh, that okay there are some dangers ahead so mm. next time when you are going from your prison you should be careful there's a deep hole here there's a deep hole here but none has been done so this resident just moved to the, the lagoon as usual to fish so far, as, as you are speaking, um, some or uh, seven persons have so far drowned in the in this dive created by the seven C mining uh, salt mining company. Did, did you um, say seven that, people have drowned? Yes, please. So far, seven okay. people have drowned. Mm. In total. Wow! Wow! Okay. Okay. Yes. So, Desmond, I'm curious to know what method of salt mining does. Um, seven Cs use, do you know? Because, you know, a lot of the time we just talk about the collection of the salt water, mm. the brine, evaporation, but evaporates. are they doing any kind of um, deep shaft mining? Are they, I mean, how intricate and sophisticated are their operations? Okay, so I don't really know the method they are using, but what I know is this, that canal uh, all the way from the sea into the lagoon the sea starts um, around Adina. Okay. So through Adina all the way to Lakladi Kofa, um, Nogopo area, yes, that's where the lagoon is. So the dark canal from the sea into the lagoon, where they drop their seawater and use for their uh, salt mining. But this, the canals have now gotten closer to these communities, the uh, the uh, Lakhlegi Kofa, 
Okay. So they've actually so they've actually dug canals. Yes, please. Okay, they've actually dug canals. That's what I wanted to understand. So this is a very mm. intricate operation because yeah. I wanted to understand, you know, usually when things like this happen, we are talking about very deep holes that people are actually drowning mm. in. It would mm. mean that they've gone very deep into yeah, the, into the, 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 the riverbed or yeah. the seabed or whatever yeah. it is, the, the bed of the lagoon in mm. this case. Okay, so seven people have died. Um, <laughs> so what, what is the company telling you? I mean, unfortunately, we may not be able to speak to them today, but what it has the company said to you or to okay, the so people in the community? Yes, yeah. so, so for now, the company is yet to engage with the community people, um, even after the death of the seven people. Okay. Hmm. Which, which uh, recently for Paris, a mother and her three children. The so community, according to them, they are, um, they, they've done no wrong. Mm. They've done no wrong in the death of these four people or seven people. According to them, um, they, they, they made it known to the community that they are digging their holes or uh, sites in their area. Okay. But they've not put any warning signs ahead mm. and that now is the major problem among the or between the, 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 the company and the community members if you dug a hole close to me you should let me know okay that there's, there's a danger ahead since this is where you go for your fishing so next time when you are going you, you ensure that those you are standing there are able to swim but yes. okay Yes, oh, please so go that ahead. The of the yeah. company, they, they are not uh, willing to take any blame for the death of the people in the community. Okay, Desmond, are you privy to the kinds of permissions that any company that's going to mine salt in the community are given? Uh, licenses, anything of the sort, and you know what comes as in terms of responsibility with that. So, are you supposed to put up warning signs in different spaces? Are you supposed to do community sensitization? Yeah. Are you privy to any of this information and how uh, it all works? Yes, please, but not all. But what, what I understand is that um, before you start your salt mining company in these areas, you first need to go to the minerals regulatory body to ensure that all safety measures are followed. Okay. Afterwards, you go to the community, you engage them, you let them know the, what, what they are coming to do, the dangers ahead, what they should do also to protect themselves. Okay. But realize the case, uh, according to the residents, none of this has been done to them. They are even uh, alleging that the company is now doing uh, or mining illegally mm -hmm. as they, they acquired a place at Adima. But since they are now extending their areas to like Lekopa and Nogopo areas, none or nothing has that to engage these communities uh, to, to show they, they, are, they, are, they are not part of whatever the company is doing. They feel they are being neglected and neglected from the activities of the agencies mining limited. Okay, Desmond, again, fine, permissions may be given. I, I mean, these are all allegations at this point. We, of course, we need to speak to the company and possibly you know, any other authorities that govern this space, right? But from what you know, I mean, this is a, f a fishing community. So are you aware of any actions or things that are also put in place to make sure that we are protecting the livelihood of the people, regardless of whether licenses have been issued or not, regardless of whether the mining is happening legally or illegally? what kinds of structures are put in place to ensure that the people and their livelihood because they need to fish and you can't fish from from the from the land you need to fish from the water body right so yes, are yes, you aware yes. of any structures that have been put in place to make sure that their interests and their livelihood are protected okay exactly so um for for, for this kind of companies they are not supposed to be much closer to the community they should at least be some two kilometers away from the community. So, so three, com sure three kilometers, three kilometers. Is that right? About three. Three. About three okay. About three kilometers away. Okay. To ensure that the people still continue their 
daily businesses of business. Mm. Because when you bring it closer to them, you are now putting their lives in danger. Mm. And if you bring it closer without any warning signs, any barbed wire to fence your area, you are still endangering them without putting any side post to let them know that, okay, below here is a six feet deep hole or it's, it's, it's six feet deep. Mm. Um, people still continue to come there. As, as happened on the on the seventeenth of this month, oh, the, the, the mother and her three children went to prison. They were not aware of the people in in the in the in the lagoon, and it's just closer to the to the community. But this is where the the community go prison every day. Mm. It, it's a it's a daily business activity for the people there. So for these companies to to work and also be at peace with their people, they need to engage them, they need to uh, uh, provide safety measures, and also other things that, that, that are just important to let or to, to ensure that lives are protected in the area. Okay, Desmond, my final question to you, apart from fishing, is the, you know, the, in terms of the water bodies that are within these communities, is any of, of this used for transportation, you know, between communities or anything of the sort, or when it comes to the community, they simply use the water bodies for fishing? Yes, they simply use it for fishing. Okay, okay. All right. So, Desmond, thank you. I mean, we'll be keeping an eye on the situation. But thank you very much for bringing us the report and for giving us the updates that you have. We've been speaking to Desmond Agor, and, of course, he is our correspondent in the Volta region. Mm -hmm. David. Yeah, you know, so um, I think that from what we have so far, what we've gleaned from the report and what we've gleaned from our correspondent, it sounds like the company has a lot of questions to answer. Um, first of all, why are you basically at the doorstep of the community um, digging uh, holes and creating a dike right at the doorstep of the community within the waters that they fish um, because these are not like heavy boats you know fishermen right. kind of thing where they can power boats and go out far into yeah. the water no this is just you know small you know size and some of them I'm sure they don't even go because because for what Benjamin said this is shallow water mm. that you can even stand in so you know, I'm sure you're just catching fish around the, the, the shoreline and not going too far. So it means that the company has a lot of questions to answer as to why they've done that. And then up, up from, the, from the report, there was no community engagement whatsoever, exactly. I mean, which I mean, is of course, mandatory. Is, of course, this is what mm. the people are saying. Are saying we'll, we'll definitely yeah. have to hear from the company yeah. to, to also hear their side yeah. of the story. But this is what the community is mm. saying. And if... Indeed, they're assuming there was even community engagement. There are even 10 or 15 people who didn't hear. That's a problem, mm. you know, because those 10 or 15 people could be the ones losing their lives. And even the loss of one life yeah. is too much, yeah. right? But then again, I mean, I, I mean, I find it very curious. You know, so they're also saying there's no, there are no warning signs, you know. Yeah, so, so, so where the that. holes are. Is where the warnings are supposed, supposed to, be. to be. Do you see? Yeah. Uh -huh. but I mean, just like if warning, you're on a road, exactly. there's men at work yes. or slow down yes. or, exactly. you know, all that. And you don't, put, for example, you don't put the sign for a ramp uh, 100 meters away from where the right. ramp is. You, you, you put speed it up. where the ramp yeah. is so that we know exactly. that this is where the problem is. You see? Yeah. And the way water works, you know, with, with, with these kinds of water mm. bodies, the undercurrents are yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the deeper you go, or the, more, the, the lower the, the bed mm. of the water body, yeah. the higher the current. Mm. So even if you know how to swim, getting out of yeah. that, it's almost like you're being pulled into a yeah. whirlpool. Yeah. Doesn't, regardless of how experienced a swimmer you are or how used you are to the water body, if, even if that were the initial depth, mm. you could easily yeah. lose your life. Yeah. It will carry you away. Mm. So the company has some questions to answer. But for now, I believe we have the MC of K2 South yeah. on the line. Maxwell Lugudo. Um, Lugudo. Maxwell Lugudo. Mm -hmm. Maxwell Kofi Lugudo is on the line. Good morning. Good morning, Chief. How are you doing? 
I'm doing good by Josie. How are you? Good. Doing? I'm very well, thank you. So I'll go straight to the point. We received reports from your jurisdiction that a company, um, the Seven Seas Salt Mining Company, has been doing some mining in the area, and it's reached the point <coughs> where holes have been created in the water bodies as a result. And so those who live in your community who go and do their fishing like they normally do and like they've been doing for years, unfortunately, some of these people have lost their lives because they're not aware of these holes that have been created and they went and they drowned. Are you aware of this? And I mean, what can you tell us about the situation if you are? Thank you, my sister, and uh, thank you. Good morning to your cherry to your listeners. Uh, actually, this is one of the, 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 the challenges or the problems I inherited as the MC. Mm. Uh, I was doing everything possible for this uh, problem to be resolved before this unfortunate thing happened. You were actually making sense. I asked the company to actually put signs or warning signs all over the place. Actually, I was... Uh, advising to, for them to put wire meshes all over. But when they put that, it means they are stopping the, 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 the community from doing fishing. Mm. So uh, they were putting the, the warning signs all over before the unfortunate thing happened. That's that now, apart from that, uh, uh, we, I met with the, 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 the paramount in the area for us to intensify our education, especially taking young, young uh, child children to the fishing uh, is, is, is very bad. Mm. Uh, what happened, we had a, a child of eight years, uh, ten years, all involved in. So we really intensified that now. Uh, below 18 years, uh, we don't expect them to, to go there till the place is dry. The place gets dry during the dry season. They were working during the dry season when the rain set in. Mm. Do you, um, Honorable, do you already see certain challenges that the company uh, will have to answer to um, by looking at the situation as we look at, as we see now? Yeah, as I said now, uh, what is very important, what do we do so that this thing shouldn't happen again? Okay. Uh, as I said now, uh, that is why I called, uh, Mr. we invited the company to make sure they put the warning signs there. They made us aware that they were working when the rain set in. For them to see all these now unless the place dry. So we cannot wait and consent to the place get dry. We don't know what might happen again. Right. So we're actually asking them to put all as I said now they put money signs all over. But as I'm talking to now just passing the place. Uh, there are people also going the same place the thing happened. There are people still there being fishing now. Hmm. So that is why we're saying we don't want underage to go to that place now. Yeah. So honorable from what you can tell us we we've learned that and you can correct us if that's not the case but we've learned that when the licenses and permissions are given for companies like this company to do salt mining they are supposed to be at least three kilometers away from the communities these fishing communities does it mean that this is happening within the community and it's not where it's supposed to be happening or is it that the people are going to places that they're also not supposed to go to Yes, actually, uh, when you look at what happened, people climb the dike that is created to go into where uh, the, the, the salt mining is. You know, the, 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 the company is using that water for the salt mining. Yeah. But uh, they are not asking the people not to go. Uh, actually, there, there are lots of fish there. Mm. But uh, where actually the thing happened, you realize that the people are trying to climb the dike oh. when the little one fell into to the, yes, the, the, the pit that is outside the dike. I see. So the people like, and exactly. that is what caused the problem. Exactly, exactly. So what we ask the, the company to do, things we cannot, it's not easy to prevent the people from going there. Mm. We ask them to uh, uh, identify particular places that they can easily walk to, to the dike okay. so that they can do their fishing. Because even people go there in the night mm. to do the fishing. So, and then we cannot be there to stop people from not going there. It will bring another thing to Right. So uh, we ask the company to give a, a foot, let me put it a foot path that they can pass through to the site to go and do their fishing. Okay. If the place gets dry, that we can identify the fishing. The information we are gathering now is uh, when the, 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 the company was doing their site, some individuals contacted the, the operators 
to dig this uh, 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 fish pond for them. So some are all over that which we cannot identify because there are a lot of uh, but they were doing this when the rain set in. So until the the, the place gets dry before we can know this one is that this that is this place. Uh, that is what we are doing to to, to prevent people from uh, uh, entering to those places now, especially the, the little ones. Okay. okay. All right. All right, Honourable, thank you very much for speaking to us. And You're welcome. I'm, I'm sure if you have updates, you'll let us know. And we'll also follow up if we have any That's further okay. questions. Thank you very much. We've been speaking to Maxwell Kofi Lugudor. He's the MC for K2 South. David. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, for me, even after speaking to him, I just feel that the warning signs are critical. Absolutely. Um, I'm not sure how much community engagement really took place and that if, as of this morning, after the deaths that have taken place, people, people are, are still, still going, going there, there, I think there needs to be both the from the assembly side and the company side, there needs to be um, engagement with the community from the chief level to like a town hall, village hall type of, you know, com uh, engagement with them to let them know that certain areas are dangerous, okay. you know, so that they can then be informed and know that, listen, don't go swimming here because this is, you know, where the challenge but and, is And be. maybe on a, on a bigger <coughs> scale, on mm. a more macro level and maybe long term, you see, a lot of we experience similar conversations and similar situations when we're talking about dam spillages yes, yes, and yes, all yes, that. Yes, yes, yes. People are attached to their spaces of heritage, yeah. where their fathers and mothers, their yeah. grandfathers, grandmothers, great grandfathers, mm. great grandmothers mm. lived, where they fished, where they grew up, where they were born. It's what they know. Mm. It's their way of life. But really, I think on a national level, if we are going to be doing things like salt mining. Mm. We can't be doing it within communities yeah, where people are living, eating, and working every we day. We really shouldn't. We really can't. Yeah. And so we need to be looking, I believe, mm. at a national scale, have a concerted effort, a proper, well-laid-out plan mm. for re relocation. Yeah. And relocation, that doesn't make people also feel as though they are losing their connection, their connection with their heritage, with their heritage yeah. or losing a source of livelihood. Mm. We've just left things to unravel very in, in yeah. very haphazard ways over time. And these are the situations we are going to face because with development comes industry mm. and what's not. Yeah. We'll see this kind of thing, but we also just can't expect the people to understand mm. that, oh yeah, this is happening, it's dangerous for you, don't go there. That's yeah. not how it works. Yeah. We really need to be looking at these things and planning properly. Otherwise, we're heading down a path that we really don't want to go down. Yeah. And I don't think we're seeing that. Yep. Well. Um, we'll be talking more about these things and going deeper and further. We'll take a quick break and we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere.